Good evening and welcome to the Wednesday edition of Newsmax Prime. I'm J.D. Hayworth. Of prime interest tonight, under review. The Iran nuclear deal in the spotlight yet again on Capitol Hill today with several high-profile Obama administration officials testifying and members of our military. More on that a bit later. But first, ISIS-inspired terror arrests in the United States. A key West Florida man arrested yesterday for plotting to blow up beaches in South Florida using a backpack bomb. 23-year-old Harlem Suarez came to the attention of the FBI after a series of Facebook posts praising the terror group. Meanwhile, in Lackawanna, New York, a 44-year-old man was arrested for attempting to join the Islamic State and for efforting to recruit others to join him. FBI agents arrested Arafat Nagy when they learned he was about to leave the country. In addition to pledging support to this organization, on two separate occasions, Nagy traveled from Lackawanna, New York, to Turkey with the intention of joining ISIL. Further, before the trips were uh, embarked upon, the complaint alleges that Nagy purchased numerous items of military combat gear. For more on this story, let's welcome in the former in uh, chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Pete Hoekstra, and also joining us to talk about this, the former spokesman for the Defense Department, J.D. Gordon, both those gentlemen at Newsmax Washington. And Pete, earlier today, the FBI announced it had arrested that New York man for trying to recruit for ISIS on social media. In the past three months, the FBI has arrested and charged at least 25 people for having ties to ISIS. But usually, the Federal Bureau of Investigation watches suspects as long as possible before making arrests. Does this indicate a change in strategy and perhaps that the threat of ISIS is getting closer to home? I don't think it indicates a change in status. I think they've always waited uh, fairly lengthy through the process to see if they could identify other individuals who might be part of the process. The second thing would be to make sure that they develop <coughs> a very, very strong case against these individuals, something that will stand up in court. Uh, the continued reach of, of ISIL into the United States is something we ought to be really concerned about. You know, these were the guys that were not necessarily the brightest kids on the block that got caught. I worry about the ones that have bought into this ideology and are, and are very, very smart and are doing it in ways that they are not being identified and being tracked by our law enforcement. Well, in terms of something working to the benefit of the United States, J.D., the fact that uh, social media has been used in the past, but in this instance, at least social media tipped off uh, our uh, authorities, does that mean something is now working in terms of homeland security. Hi, J.D. You know, I think it's a dual-edged sword. I think uh, we have more risks because of social media, because of guys being recruited like this young man in Florida. But also, at the same time, the FBI is able to look at Facebook and Twitter and help make arrests that way. So it's a dual-edged sword with technology. I think we've got to get to the heart of the matter, and that's the uh, toxic ideology of radical Islam coming from the Middle East, because there are no shortage of psychopaths and maladjusted loners out there, like this guy in New York and the, the young man in Florida. So I think we really have to get at the heart of it. That's radical Islam, and we've got to change that culture of hate coming out of the Middle East, starting with changing education over there and promoting gender equality and, and a whole range of things we've got to do. But we've got to identify the problem, and President Obama is not doing it. Well, uh, Pete, we just heard J.D. line out Islamic terror, and yet... Uh, Jay Johnson, the Homeland Security Secretary, told an audience at the Aspen Institute that it's critical to refrain from using the term Islamic when talking about uh, terrorist countries here in the United States uh, so that we can build trust in Muslim communities. Your take on that advice from Jay Johnson. Uh, it's been a failed strategy for seven years. Uh, of the Obama administration, and even uh, the last few years of the Bush administration. It's time to identify this threat uh, for what it is. It comes out of the core uh, beliefs of radical Islam. It is associated with uh, the Islamic movement. Uh, it needs to be identified. The Islamic uh, 
leaders need to identify it. They are the ones that are, have to be the ones calling this out. We are not going to defeat this threat if we do not identify it. It's, it's, it's so frustrating, uh, and it just is ongoing and ongoing uh, from this administration. Uh, another growing threat, or at least a problem, the number of refugees coming here from Syria. The war there has prompted large numbers of Syrians to come to the U.S. So far, almost a thousand have been allowed in. By the end of 2015, that number could grow at least to 2,000, maybe more. Uh, there are concerns the government doesn't know who all these people are. J.D. Gordon, are we making a mistake by letting these refugees in? I think that we are making a mistake because I think we're taking in too many without screening them properly. They've had a tremendous amount of trauma in Syria, over 200,000 people killed in the last four years. So these people have gone through a lot of trauma and if they get over here and they're not monitored well enough or not screened well enough, they could be the next jihadist because uh, those people will be vulnerable. They'll be vulnerable to uh, this message of hate coming from the Islamic State, which is operating in a third of Syria and a third of Iraq. So I think the administration's making a mistake in taking too many refugees in without screening them properly. Uh, two minutes remain, and uh, earlier today, General Martin Dempsey, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, testified about the Iran agreement before the Senate Armed Services Committee. He was asked a very important question from freshman Iowa Senator Joni Ernst. Let's listen to this exchange, and then, Pete, I'd like to get your reaction afterwards. And I understand that, that you advise the president on these issues. Is that what you have told the president? Is that we either take this deal or we go to war? No, at no time did that come up in our conversation, nor did I make that comment. Who is advising the president then that we must go to war if this deal is not signed? I can't answer that. I can tell you that we have a range of options and I always present them. Uh, so General Dempsey, being non-political, said that specter of war was never discussed. Pete, uh, what do you make of that? Is the Obama administration exaggerating one of its talking points trying to sell this? Well, you would think that with all the discussion that they've had with Secretary Kerry saying the only option is we have to go to war, you would think that they would have discussed what that would have entailed, what it would have looked like. Uh, and they would have brought General Dempsey in. Obviously, they didn't bring him in. It's, he's clueless on this. Uh, I don't know whether it's an exaggerated talking point. The bottom line is we had lots of other options in this agreement uh, than going to war that would have, I think, sent a strong message to Iran, and we would have gotten a much better agreement that we could have lived with than this agreement, which really provides them a pathway to, new, to a nuclear weapon. Uh, J.D. Gordon, about 30 seconds, and we're hearing reports, apparently now it's been confirmed. Mullah Omar, one of the top Taliban leaders in Afghanistan, apparently died back in April of 2013. Why do you think we're just now learning of his death? Well, we've heard reports of his death before, so I think that it's uh, tough to make sure we get a confirmation whether he was killed or not. Uh, I, I think it's great news from Afghanistan. We're finally hearing it's obviously true now. Uh, but uh, I think it's hard in the past just to confirm because he's hidden in the mountains and moving back in places, back and forth to cities uh, that we don't really have a good uh, sense if he's uh, alive or not on a given day. So I think finally, here's some good news we can celebrate from Afghanistan. Let's just hope it's true, knock on wood. Uh, we will have to leave it there. J.D. Gordon and Pete Hoekstra, gentlemen, you have our thanks. Still to come, a Pennsylvania Democrat congressman indicted on corruption charges. Rick Unger and Ford O'Connell discuss. Then, can a former pastor become our next president? Mike Huckabee answers that question in my exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview. But first, will business success automatically lead to political success? It seems to be working for Donald Trump right now, but can it last? That's next when Newsmax Prime continues.